So I guess you are probably aware about the recent popularity of uh, Fujifilm cameras, especially the X100 line. Their built-in film simulation and the beautiful image they can produce straight out of camera is one of the reasons explaining why the demand for these cameras is at record high at the moment. Even the second-hand market got crazy and the X100V is being sold at unreasonable price at the moment, which really tempered down my desire to get one. But the Ricoh GR3, which I do own, also has some built-in film simulation that you can customized to uh, make these kind of uh, film simulation recipes just like on the Fujis and that will be the subject of today's video. Using recipes to capture beautiful JPEGs have two main benefits. It can help you have more consistency and it will save you a lot of time. Once your recipe is set, you'll have a standard look and feel throughout all your images, giving your work a more uniform appearance. And if you're not a fan of spending hours editing, using a film simulation recipe is the perfect solution. It will add that extra touch to your images without the hassle of post-processing. The first recipe is called Cotton Color 400 and it's a creation from a fellow YouTuber called A Life and it is inspired by Kodak's Portra 400. It features muted colors, low to mid contrast and bright highlights. The colors are very pleasing, I really do like the blue and the red in this style. When shooting RAW and editing my pictures, I like to soften them by decreasing the clarity and here this kind of soft look is already baked in. I wish this recipe had a little more punch and contrast in the shadows but it's a solid choice for capturing beautiful images in every scenario as it uses a custom auto white balance that can adapt to day and nighttime photos. The second recipe is called Americana Color. It is brought to us by RicoRecipes.com and it tries to replicate classic Kodak aesthetic based on American New Color photography. The white balance is set at 5250 Kelvin and leads heavily towards yellow and green. It has a really distinctive and quite cinematic look, but that makes it less versatile and can result in unnatural looking images. The white balance is also fixed, which makes shooting at night not very possible, as 5250 Kelvin is more for daytime shooting. That strong look is built in, so if used in appropriate scenarios, it can produce nice pictures, I think, but I'm not a huge fan, it's very contrasty and the highlights get burned quite easily. I found this third recipe on a blog written by a Hong Kong based photographer called Sam Lee. According to him it's very suitable for photographing people and I can see that. The skin tones are not too affected and have a pleasing natural appearance. This recipe also features pretty muted colors, low to mid contrast and bright highlights. The white balance compensation leans heavily towards blue and a little bit of green. It has also an auto white balance so you can shoot this in various conditions. 
It worked well on these rainy shots to emphasize on the cold feeling conveyed by the rain. As suggested, this recipe tries to mimic the Portra 400. I'm definitely not a film expert, so I can't tell you if it does a great job, but overall, I like this style. In some scenarios, the green can look a little bit funky, so this is something to pay attention at. For the fourth and last recipe of today, I'll introduce my own creation. The negative film profile was introduced with the latest firmware update, 1.7. It has a less contrasty and more muted look. It has a tendency to be more bright than the standard profile, so it is something to take into account when creating a recipe and exposing your shots. The greens are shifting more towards a blue slash aqua, while the reds are slightly desaturated and leaning towards orange. I tried to get close to the style I like for my edited pictures with my most used preset. I used the auto white balance to make it more versatile and moved the white balance compensation towards yellow and green to have a more warmer, slightly cinematic feel. I also moved a few settings to have a decent amount of contrast and to avoid clipping the highlights too quickly. It's worth noting that some film simulation recipe can result in very artificial and unnatural look. On top of that, relying on JPEG files only will definitely limit the amount of flexibility and control you have on your images, potentially ruining a good shot with weird colors. That's why I will always recommend shooting RAW and JPEG, so you have the flexibility and the freedom to edit further if needed or if wanted. A few final thoughts on this experiment. While Fuji cameras offer more customization and have more convincing results, in my opinion. The GRs also have some good looks and it doesn't slow down while shooting with these custom profiles. In contrast, I saw and heard some people complaining about Fuji's taking a lot of time to process the images, potentially causing you to miss the decisive moment. That can be really frustrating if it's not our fault and it's just because of the camera taking too much time to process the previous shot. What I also felt shooting JPEGs is that it helped me staying focused and more mindful in the moment. I was paying more attention at getting my exposure right because I knew I would not spend some time on Lightroom to correct that later. I think this will definitely not change my workflow as I'm someone who loves spending hours in Lightroom editing my images and giving them a certain look but I'm sure the more casual Rico shooter may actually benefit from giving up a little bit of flexibility shooting JPEG only but having a more seamless shooting experience in exchange. I hope you liked the video and you found it interesting. I'm now really curious to know if you shoot JPEGs and interested in seeing your result. So don't hesitate to tag me or whatever so I can see your work. Looking forward to engage with you in the comment section and let's catch up in the next one. Bye.